welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I'll be your host again today. The inspiration for this show um, really comes from two parts. One is having written my memoirs recently for my daughters, and also having read countless obituaries and leaving them with the feeling of, boy, I wish I had gotten to know this person when they were alive. So this show is dedicated to introducing you to wonderful people from all walks of life who are very much alive and have wonderful stories to tell you of their life. And um, my feeling is that everyone has a story to tell. And so this show is dedicated to giving people the opportunity to share their story with you. If uh, you're interested in being a, a guest on this show, please feel free to write me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Or if you have a question for one of our guests, again, feel free to write me that question. I will get it to the guest. And again, at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Today, I'm fortunate to have as our guest is Melinda Moulton. Welcome, Melinda. Thank you so much. I was walking around, Gary, because I'm trying to make sure I've got my, my web access for you. So I apologize if you lose me down here in, in the hinterlands of Vermont. But thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really thrilled to uh, see well, my new show for CCTV. And I'm so glad to be your, your guest today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Melinda, you have an amazing life from what I could see from the outside. And we've connected over the years in different ways. But um, certainly Main Street Landing, Union Station, uh, you're, as an entrepreneur, your commitment to social responsibility. I've always known you to be very sensitive to the nonprofit world and, um, and allowing them to rent space from you, in your buildings. You're, I, you're an amazing risk taker. Um, you started that whole beautiful Main Street Landing building, um, and I, I had the uh, I know Bruce Cipher quite well, so I know he, he and you have connected. But um, that was a huge risk um, in all different ways. Um, did it? It's it's really given something tremendous to the community here. Um, and I know you have a wonderful relationship with your husband. It, you know, the love between you two is it, it's like it just permeates throughout the community. It's a wonderful thing for many other people. So anyhow, my my opening question to you is, how did you become the person that you are today, and that you that you have been for this community that we toil in? Um, well, that's that's a big question. Um, <laughs> I, I I I don't know. I don't know how I became. <laughs> sort of the person the person that I am that I am today here Rick come here I want to just introduce you um, to Gary this is my husband Rick so I have a lot to um, to to Hi, Rick offer Good him to meet you. Um, so I'm gonna try to save the web bandwidth so I can do this interview because <laughs> oh, okay. I know that we that we could lose our web yeah. we live way out here in the country I you know I I would I would venture that I probably um, uh, can credit it to uh, to a lot of things, um, or or discredit it to a lot of things. I'm not sure about that, but um, you know, my childhood was, uh, you know, I lost my mom when I was 12, and I had to grow up really fast and um, and find my way in life. And mm. so, in the process, uh, you 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 make the path that you can make. And I think sometimes. Uh, children who lose their parents at an early age they they grow up really fast and they have to find a way and so i've always been uh been self motivated and uh self inspired and um and i just think it's in my spirit my father was a general contractor in pennsylvania and he was a hard working man and um i was very close to him uh, I used to go into the office with him. He, he'd work six, seven days a week. And mm -hmm. I'd go in on Saturdays and Sundays and I would help him with his construction business and do a lot of his calculating when you had those big machines that you went like, oh, yeah. you know, before we had calculators. <laughs> and, um, you know, and he was a hard worker and he was driven yeah. and he and he built a lot of beautiful buildings down in the Lehigh Valley. And 
Mm. Uh, and uh, so he was a real inspiration to me mm. um, growing up. But I, I don't, then I also had the support of my husband who for 55, 50, 51 years has been by my side and, mm. and been a support that's allowed me as a woman to be able to really pursue a, a, a very challenging career because uh, without mm. him, two children, it would have been, it would have been a struggle. And so I have to uh, credit him for, for standing by me to, to give me the space to be able to do the work that I do. But um, so anyway, so I, I don't know where it comes from, but it, but it's inside me and, yeah. um, it, and, have, and it's, <laughs> well, it's, we're, we're, we're all benefiting from it. And it, that's for sure. Um, did you have brothers, sisters? I did. Yes, I have. I have. Uh, I have three siblings from my family, and then my father remarried and had uh, two of his own and two two stepchildren. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yes, I have quite a few siblings, um, and uh, they're all they're all over the the country. So yep. Okay. And I have, I have two beautiful children and four beautiful grandchildren. So wonderful. Um, oh, and and then I also, I also want to give credit to the people that I work for. I mean, Lisa Steele, who owns Main Street Landing, I mean, she gave me this opportunity for 40 years to to lead her company and to do the work that we do. And she's entrusted me mm. with this, this incredible challenge and work. And she's yes. been right there with me, helping me move this this forward. And I think her trust and her 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 um, her joy in seeing us do this work has really mm. been inspirational. And it, and it was and it wasn't. And, you know, you said that it was it was kind of a risk. Well, it, it was a risk, but it wasn't a risk because I think in our hearts, we knew that if we built a beautiful building and we mm. did the work that cared about our community, that it would be successful. And today with COVID, we sit at almost hundred percent occupancy. That's so amazing. Wow. it's been a successful company for 40 years because I think we just always led with our heart and yes. with love instead of greed and selfishness. So mm. it pays off, right? It does pay off, obviously. Yes. How did you two meet? You and Lisa. Well, I applied for, well, I applied for a job back in 1983. I applied for a position of director of operations for a, for a new development company on the Burlington waterfront, and <laughs> I applied for a job. And at the time, you know, she wasn't, you know, basically in the center of it all. Yeah. Uh, and I interviewed yeah. for the position. I got the job, and. So we, we, we moseyed our way through the Alden plan and I had met Lisa on occasion right. at events and stuff. And then right. that whole thing fell through. And yeah. I took a job, I took a job in marketing with Lake Champlain chocolates. Uh, and about a year later, she called me and she said, Hey, you know, I gotta, I gotta do something with this company. And I, and, and, you know, I could really, you know, I really would love it if, and we were in touch all the time because we yeah. became really close friends. And yeah. I said, well, listen, Lisa, I said, I'll come back. I'll come back if, if you and I take this on. I mean, let's do it, girlfriend. I mean, we can do better than anybody. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Let's and she do said, it. let's do it. So we renamed the company Main Street Landing. We 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 reorganized our 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 uh, our consultants. We hired a new accountant and a new law firm, and we, wow. we downsized everything to yeah. to a to a sustainable scale. And then we moved really into our social and environmental mission. And then mm -hmm. we put together a landing team of four architects who for two years put together a master plan for our prop for the property. And uh, and then it was time to build and we started building and here we are, you know, 40 years wow. later. So yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> you have a spirit about you. Well, uh, you're you. an optimist, aren't you? Well, I am. I, I have my moments. I mean, especially mm -hmm. now. I've had my moments in the last few years where I've been a little bit dowry and cranky and sure. consumed with sadness and 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 trying to find the hope in my heart but um yeah. but my hope is in my hope is in our youth i think we have a, a generation <clears throat> of of human beings coming up that i mean we tried i mean gary come on you got to be close to my age how old are you my friend 71 well i am too so you're born in 1950 absolutely well, what month what month when's your June. birthday June. June. I'm in May. I'm a little older than you. There you so go. So I'm a month, a month older than you. But no, we, you know this. I mean, yes. think of our generation in the yes. 60s. I mean, we, civil rights, women's rights, you know, free love, you know, the, the, the you know, revolting against the war, you know, all the, pe the peace and love, the environment exactly. from the start, you know, Earth Day. Exactly. Our generation yeah. was that generation. And here we are at 71 and we're looking around and going, 
I mean, I look around and go, how did how did we fail this these these youngsters? Right. How do we how do we drop right. the ball? Right. And and it's it's very discouraging for me because I thought our generation could take it right to the, but to the but end. you know, yep. but when you think about you know the election in two thousand mm -hmm. and Al Gore, I mean, think of what our world would be if Al Gore had been our president. Mm -hmm. So, you and I come from. I mean, we're born a month apart. Exactly. We know we know what we had to do as that generation yes. to to make the change. We were only seventeen percent of the entire of the entire populace of the country. Seventeen percent were was the hippie movement, and yes. um, and we we moved a lot. Disability rights, all those voting rights, it all happened in our generation. Exactly, and, women's rights. Yep. And these so, kids are going to have to jump up and take take the helm because we're dying. So yes. So dying. you have. Um, kept the vision and the spirit of those times back in the 60s, where there was a sense of we can have a different world if we put our, our focus on that, if we put our energy, if we put our careers and lives out there. You kept that through till today. Um, many others, you know, uh, the lure of money, the lure of um, just... Um, other things in life pulled them away from that, um, and you you can you can see that through our our age group. But what what why why did you stick with it? Why did you keep focused? Why did you keep moving forward on all those issues that that we care so much about? Well, it was only seventeen percent of our population, so we were we were a real minority. Mm -hmm. I mean, our revolution, the sixties revolution, was a minority movement that changed that just really took. You know the the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and just turned it on its head. But it was only 17 percent. Today we have 70 percent of our country believes in pretty much everything yeah. that you and I believe in. You know right. all the you know you know gay rights, civil rights, women's rights. Uh, you know the environment. I mean, now 70 percent of the country is with us. Yeah. And so mo moving this needle. Um, if we can get through this voter suppression and some of this other stuff that's going on that could really destroy our democracy, uh, we have a lot of hope in the next 20 or 30 years if we can if we can get climate under control because that's the big issue. I mean, it's yes. 120 degrees today in Italy, and if we can't get climate under control, then all of this is just it doesn't matter because the it human race. Matter. I hate to say this to everybody in my audience, but I'm I'm really I, I want you to know if we don't yeah. get this under control. Our species will cease to exist. We will no longer be on this planet. We are the largest food source on this planet right now. And yeah. a lot of things are going to want to, you know, take advantage of that, including all these pathogens and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But climate is the number one issue. If we can't get the world to change the way that we are living, then then we will cease to exist in the next hundred years. Yeah. So no, anyway. I agree. Yeah, no, you're right. So, so you wonder why? So you wonder why? You wonder why? <laughs> why, yeah. why I keep doing this? Yeah. I have. I, there are beautiful young human beings that have come into this world, not by their own choice. Right. And they have to live on this planet. And I'll be gone. You and I will probably go, be gone in the next twenty or thirty years. Yeah. What is it going to look like for them in the year twenty fifty or twenty sixty if we're having temperatures of one hundred and twenty in Italy right now? Right. I mean, and so for 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 that. I am more outraged. I mean, you remember the the they called them the what were they called the white pant the the white panthers and we were like the old grandmothers back in the sixties were the out there. Great panthers, right? The great panthers marching right. with us, right? Well, yeah. now you and I are the great panthers, <laughs> and I am more emboldened and more passionate and more enthusiastic and really energized to mm. make these changes happen. I do not want to die. And leave this planet the way it is. I would. I can't do that. So I'm actually more more activated now than ever because we don't have time, Gary. Yeah. We don't have time. Yeah. No, I agree with you. So, Melinda, what would your advice be to a young person in their 20s about embarking on a career in life, given what you just said, and given what we know about the world today? Well, it's really hard for these young kids. You know, when Rick and I moved to Vermont and we bought this little piece of land with a little small little trust I got from my great grandmother, we bought this little little meadow up here. We got an FHA loan for for sixteen thousand dollars to build the stone house, and it was a half a percent was the interest rate. So we paid eighty six dollars a month. Wow. We built a little stone house that we could live in, 
yep. with our with our son, and it was eighty six dollars a month. Today, kids have their school loans. They're struggling with health insurance. A lot of kids have moved home to be. They're dealing with COVID. They're dealing with this economic crisis. I mean, we we had a lot of things going on too. But these young kids today. So my advice would be: look, figure out what it is that you love. Is it the trades? Get into the trades. Right now, we need people in the mm. trades. Mm. Yeah, go, go go to Vermont Tech. Go to Community College of Vermont. Get 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 the training that you need to get to to serve your your community. Um, and and then. But figure out what you love to do and don't do what you think you should do. Do what you love to do and then figure out how to make it happen. Mm. Um, because that if you, if you love what you do, then then you'll be successful. But these kids today, they've got a lot more things on their plate than we did. And, you know, and, and you know, they're, they're trying to change that through the Build Back Better with Biden to 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 help pay off kids student loans and to give kids right. now two years of college. That's going to help these kids. I can't imagine. Rick and I couldn't have done what we did if we didn't have that FHA loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Good, good point. So your dad played a key role early in your life, obviously, with um, his work ethic, his, you know, caring, his skills. Other did, Were there other people in your life that you looked to, mentors, um, people that you know, kind of opened up a path for you that if they weren't in your life, that wouldn't have happened? Well, certainly my husband. I mean, you know, yes. when I met Rick, he was, a, he did yoga, he did yoga and he was into the I Ching and he was a spiritualist and he was, I mean, you know, he was, he was, you know, mm. he, I, I was very, I was straight compared to Rick. I mean, he was, so he pulled me into all this wonderful, mm. this whole life of spiritualism and, and, um, you know, and grounded you, it sounds and, like, yeah. And, and also made me really, you know, focus on the, you know, the earth because I was from the city mm -hmm. and he was a mountain man and, you know, he loved being out in the outdoors. And so he's the one who really had me, um, my, I mean, my father also had a farm, so I did appreciate, you know, farming and, and agriculture. But I say Rick had a big impression. I mean, we met when I was 20 mm -hmm. and I had my son when I was 22 and then my son, a uh, little Eli. I mean, you know, having a child so young, and 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 then when my daughter came along, she became like my mother that I never had. And so the people mm -hmm. around me, Lisa Steele. I mean, Lisa was a huge influence. I mean, her and her her love of of nature and 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 animals mm -hmm. and humanity. I mean, she had a huge influence on me as well as being one of my dearest friends. And mm -hmm. and I think, you know, I think, you know, I mean, people like Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I mean. The, the, the people I followed who were um, extraordinary minds uh, who cared about the right things. Um, yeah. But they say that, but they say now that we're kind of programmed from birth, whether we're going to be those kind of sapiens or whether we're going to be the other, another kind of sapien. I mean, we're kind of like there. And if we have more, they've now they're saying, if you have more Neanderthal in you, that you might be more of that more, you know, tree hugging, caring sapien because Neanderthals, actually cared for their elderly and they cared for the disabled and they've seen that in the and and that so there it's interesting that I think some of this is pre -pro, I think some of it's pre-programmed and I uh -huh. would recommend and I would recommend the book sapiens sapiens to any of your okay. of your viewers read it it's 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 thick you can get it in audio and listen to it in your car but if you want to know about our human race and how we got from there to here it's mm -hmm. really a worth the read okay well thank you Mm -hmm. So I noticed in in um, the uh, not the Union Station, but your new building, newer building, that's an incredible environmental um, example of what a building could be. There's a lot of history of the lake and Burlington in there. Is that an interest of yours? Was that Lisa's interest or both of you? It really was my husband's interest. I mean, Rick's I'm history. Kidding. Yeah, it's Rick's. I mean, really, Rick. Rick's a historian. He's a filmmaker. Uh, he's made historic films, documentaries. Hmm. And and when we started back 40 years ago, we wanted to do a history of the waterfront. So he collected over 900 images and put together a three slide projector show back when we had slide projectors, <laughs> a slide projector show. And he would go around to town halls and show it to educate people about the history of the waterfront. And then about 10 years ago, he took all of those slides and he put it into a DVD 
which we have on the history of the waterfront. And now it's on our website at MainStreetLanding.com. And it'll say the history of the Burlington waterfront. And just click on it and you can watch it. It's 45 minutes long. I am the narrator. Rick put the images together and, and wrote the script. And it really was Rick's love of the wow. history that, wow. that took us in that direction. Um, and he, by the way, Rick's has a, has a f photograph show on the second floor of the new building uh, that's 65 images of the history of the waterfront with little tags to tell you what it is. And Rick put that whole exhibit together. It's a permanent exhibit in that building. So wow. it's really, I have, to, I have to credit Rick Moulton for, for really digging deep into the history of, of the Burlington waterfront. Wow, thank you, Rick Moulton. I had no idea. Well, thank you, Peter. <laughs> God. Come, come give me a little kiss. That was, that was a great accolade. Oh. I'm going to get a kiss. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so, where can we go from here? What, what, what? Anything about your life that you want to share that uh, might inform others about how to live, how to live their life? Well, you know, um, I think I think what I want to share with with folks is number one, are we not really happy to be living in Vermont? Mm. I mean, let's think about the, how lucky all of us and all of you watching this video, Absolutely. how fortunate we are to be in this extraordinary state where we have rain every night and sun in the morning. Yeah. These wonderful rainstorms that are keeping our rivers flowing. I mean, the Colorado River is drying up. I mean, people in, yeah. in Arkansas are running out of water. I mean, Vermont, we've got our beautiful lakes and our streams uh, and, everything's green and lush. It's like, right. I mean, this year it's been pretty extraordinary. Yeah. It's like, it's like rainforest here yeah. and, and COVID. And let's look at that too. And all of you have to take credit for this. All of you, the 85% of Vermonters who have gotten vaccinated, right. pat yourself on the back. I mean, we live in a state where people really care about other people. So they're mm -hmm. getting vaccinated mm -hmm. and we're, we're caring for each other. And so COVID is, is, you know, it's rising up a little bit. We're at 118 cases, I think, yesterday or something. But, yep. but a lot of that has to do with tourism coming in. But I, I think we all need to take a moment and really be grateful that we we all land, landed on this on this piece of the earth yeah. called Vermont, yeah. where we have really smart legislators who are making legislative decisions, whether it's around paid leave, um, around climate, around women's issues. Um, that care about each other and and the climate's a beautiful it's a beautiful place to be. So I want to encourage all of our young people who have left Vermont mm -hmm. to please come back because we're mm. all aging. We're an aging population and we need you. We need you to come back and start businesses and to be employed at the businesses that we have. And it's a beautiful place to live. You're not going to get a better education anywhere in the world than there is in right. Vermont. Our education system is phenomenal. Yep. And it's a it's a it's a it's a gentle, loving place to, to raise children or to just raise yourselves. And so I encourage all our youth who have left the state to please yes. come back. Come back from California. It's you can't <laughs> breathe out there, but you can yes. breathe in Vermont, you know. Come on home. <laughs> so I mean that I mean that That's I mean that, yes. I, would love, I would love to share that with, with our folks. Um, the other thing is follow your bliss. I mean, if you think one of the things that I, I have a great um, I did a great presentation um, for Adam Hergenrother's group. Uh, I forget what the name of, of his of his of his uh, thing was that he did down at the film house, but I was one of the first presenters, and I called it the power of naivete. That so so often I meet people who say, "Oh oh," and I'll say, "Well, why don't you do this?" And they're like, "Well, you know, I didn't study it in school, and I really don't know that much about it, and I don't know mm -hmm. if I'd be really good at that." And I'm like, but you, but you would love to do that, wouldn't you? And they're like, yeah. Well, you've just got to, you've just got to do it. So my advice to my viewers who are watching is, don't feel like you have to know anything to do anything. You, if you have a passion for something and you want and you want to do something, then you just, I don't want to use a Nike. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. But <laughs> you, need, you need to step into the into that space. You need if the yeah. door opens up and somebody offers you. An opportunity, and don't sit back and worry that you may not be able to do it, or you don't have the. Mm. Just step through, because once you step through, there are people out there who can help you, 
and you'll be able to do it as long as you have the passion and love for it. It's called the power of naivete. Do the, do do something you love, even if you don't know what you're doing, because eventually it'll all work out. Lisa and I, we weren't developers. Right. We didn't know what we were doing, but we did it, and we made yep. it up, and we yep. made it up better better than anyone else because we made it up with sensitivity, with sensitivity, and with and with, you know. Yeah, why don't you take it? And we and we did it with with sensitivity, and we did it be, and we did it because we made it up in our minds. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, we're, we want to develop our our property. What should we do? Oh, let's put together a team. Let's get together these four architects that we interviewed like many, 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 and came down to four. And for two years, we sat in a room and we we charretted with these fabulous these fabulous people. And then, then it was okay. Let's build. Well, if we're going to build, let's make sure our windows open. Everybody said you can't have windows open in an office when we're going to. We have to have our windows open so you can get fresh air. And we just did what we felt was the right thing. Mm -hmm. We made it work. So the power of naivete. Keep that running through your mind. Do what right. you love. Do what you want to do, and don't worry about whether you know anything about it. You'll learn, and you can yep. do it. Just get out there and do it. Yep, that's great. So that, that's Same. something that. Same wisdom, you. So I have a question. I have a question yeah. for you. Have you ever mm -hmm. thought about running for office? Public. It comes up all the time. You know, it comes up all the time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it. People ask me ask me all the time, and um, and you know, my answer is, um, you know, I wasn't. I haven't been able to get into the political arena because I had a job, and you know, I had to put, you know, get the kids through college, and I had a job, and it was a beautiful job, and. Oh. So I didn't have time to be in politics. And um, and now at, at the age that I am, I really want to have young people running our world. Hmm. I, I just, I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, as much as I would love to get out there and lead the charge and make, I can do things from behind the scene. I can write commentaries. I can, you know, yep. do, I can do interviews like this. I can be, go down to the legislature and testify. Yeah. I can bring a lot of people to the table. I can always get people to go have breakfast with me. People love to to go down to Skinny and have a good crepe with me, so I can add anybody to the table. <laughs> I have my board service that I do. I'm on the ACLU Vermont. I've been on a lot of boards over the years. I want to see young people running our world. Mm. This is their, this is their world. This is their future. Their vision of what they want to live, how they want to live, and what they want the world to be. And yeah. I think some of us older people need to step aside. And let the young people move in. These 30, 40 year old, 50 year old people need to need to be running our world and not yes. a bunch of old hippies. I mean, we're yes. just they they have all these new ideas. I mean, everything that's coming out of their brains is just I mean, you and I struggle with, you know, the fire stick on our television. I mean, we're like, I mean, not that that's a bad thing, but <laughs> you know, we're we we need these young brains. Sure. Now there's something I want to share with you. I have a grandson who has autism and he's nonverbal and his name is Rowan and he has an extraordinary mind. He can't speak. And, mm -hmm. and he, and he has a lot of, um, a, you know, a lot of struggles because of his autism. But at the end of the day, he's one of the most extraordinary poets and his mind is so beautiful. Wow. And, and so there, there's this, this piece of humanity that's, that's coming yeah. into being, yeah. Um, of these extraordinary minds who we need to draw upon uh, to yeah. help us guide our world. We, we, yeah. So for me, yeah. to be a politician and to be down in the legislature, plus I have a hard time sitting for a long time. I need to move. So for mm -hmm. me to sit in a, in a chamber for hours, I think I'd, I'd drive people crazy because I'd start, you know, singing or something. So um, <laughs> we, we, we need young people to step up. So to all my viewers out there, all, the, all Gary's viewers, Think about if you go to Emerge, think how you can serve your yep. community. Start, start, yep. start with your school boards. Start with yep. your select boards. Start with be, be a cemetery trustee. Mm -hmm. See what's available in your town. Run for public office in your town and then move your way up and become a leader and a political leader in the state to make the change that you want to see. That's great. Good. How, tell me about your children. What, what are they doing? Linda, well, well, my son is a is a is a corporate attorney in Burlington. He's actually one of my tenants, um, and he uh, he he does a lot of startup businesses, mm. helps a lot of Vermont startup businesses, and he he really has a good clientele of socially responsible folks that he ser that he serves. And my daughter is the director of the Main Street Landing Performing Arts Center, 
So oh she runs goodness. she runs the Performing Arts Center and has for about eleven years now, because oh, wow. she was she was an Emerson grad and she understands all the technical stuff about all the you know extraordinary cameras and yep. production stuff and the light. I mean, she that's her thing. So when I was so eleven years ago, when we were really kicking this thing off, I was like. You know, I had to have experts come in and design it, and she was just ready. She was ready to get back into the working. And I said, "Would you come in and help me with this?" And she just stepped right in and took it over, and and it's just increased the visibility and our and our sales and our rentals uh, fourfold since. Wow. Since back then. So nice. she's that's what she does, Mariah that's, Riggs, and she's the director of the Performing Arts Center. Fantastic. And, and we work I, together. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I've worked with her too. <laughs> Now you've got Vermont Stage in your building, and that's a wonderful coup. She did that. Mariah that's and Christine came together. It was just this like that's the thing about Mariah too. And again, it's this generation, is they just know how to they they just know how to communicate and how to come together and create these incredible um, these incredible systems of mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to do things. And so she and Christine came together, and we got Vermont Stage, and uh, we have you know we have a lot of folks who come back you know week after week and um we're going to be opening hopefully in, in october uh we're closed right now and mariah's tuesday night movie series is going to come back and that tuesday night movie series was her idea to bring film to uh folks who maybe you know who, who want to see good old films and yeah. for a family now to go to a movie theater or back when they could it would be a $50, $60 ordeal if you had a couple of kids. And exactly. this is a free movie series every Tuesday mm. night. Fabulous movies from Gone with the Wind to, you know, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and great films. And all these community people come together, the old North End, the new North End, downtown. You know, we have a lot of homeless people who come in and they, they hang out and they all, you know, with the people who live in the big condos and everybody knows each other. We have this one homeless man who plays on the, we have a, 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 a grand piano in the lobby and he comes in yes. and he plays the beautiful pianist and he plays, he puts down all his stuff and he plays on the piano and everybody loves his music and everybody becomes one community and then we pass a cup. And we raise money for a nonprofit. So every month there's a new nonprofit. And we can raise wow. anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks for wow. a nonprofit. And they also are they also are in the advertising and they also get to come get to stand up and speak uh, right wow. before the so anyway, that's Mariah's Tuesday night, and we're gonna be bringing that back hopefully in October. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. So what do you do for hobbies? What do you do for you know, outside of um, your work, that's fulfilling to you. Um, well, things that I love to do. Well, you know, I love, um, I love golf. I'm, I, I'm a, I, <laughs> that's my good. husband, my son got me into golfing about when he was in law school down at University of Virginia. He, he had me hit a ball and I hit it so far. And I, I have an aunt who's a <laughs> good golfer. My mom and my mother was a beautiful golfer hmm. uh, before died and so i hit the ball so far my son my, for my birthday that year my son got me a set of clubs and so i go out and he, he coaches me and i and i love and rick and i like doing that together we're not very good we're about the same it's the one thing that we kind of do that's that we're equal in um but i love being on this meadow and i love uh gardening and i love hiking and i love watching my birds fledge every springtime and um and really my community service and my board service is mm. is what greatest joy and being with my family and raising my grandkids and um you know i have four of them and so it's and they're all here they're all right next to me nearby wow. nice. so uh skiing i love to ski and um but really my i think my activism is what is what is what really keeps me yep. uh most the most connected to the world yeah is there anything in uh that you haven't done yet that you want to do well, I did skydive about 25 years ago. I did. I went down to Addison by myself. My family wouldn't go with me. And I went up in this plane 11,000 feet, and the sky was behind me. And we jumped out, and the, and the chute opened. And then he said, I have to disengage this chute because it didn't open properly. And so there I am with these guys. And I, and I was so excited because I was a cliff diver. For many, many years, I was I was a high cliff diver. And um wow. Because my parents got divorced in Acapulco, and I watched the cliff divers. So when I was eight years old, I said, "I'm going to be a cliff diver," which I am. 
Uh, but anyway, so jumping out of a plane didn't bother me, but the, the chute didn't work. He let it go. Then he pulled the other one. It worked. We landed safely. No, it was amazing. Oh it was amazing. God. And I, I really wanted to take it up. But when I took off the goggles, I had these big wrinkles, these big lines around my eyes, which lasted for like six months. And I said, well, I can't live with these, these wrinkles, these things around my right. eyes. So I, never, so I never did it again, but I, I would love to take up skydiving, but I think my husband would, would have to tie <laughs> me down. I don't think he'd let me do it, but, and I've stopped cliff diving too, because um, it's not good for my hearing, but anyway, right. so what yeah. are the things that I like to do? I don't know. I think, I think really just keep trying to, to get the message out there for young people that, uh, yeah. They need to, they need to get out and, and make a difference. And if I can make a difference, I will. If I need to speak out, I just oh, this is exciting that I just started doing is I just became a member of the Williston Restorative Justice Center, oh, and I'm on oh. their executive committee. There's nine of us on the executive. There's about there's about sixty volunteers, and I'm one of nine on their executive committee. And what we do is we do restorative justice, which means that we mm -hmm. keep people out of jail. We keep no. them out away from having to go before a judge. We, yeah. we, take, we take them and the person that the crime was committed against and we bring them together and we do restorative justice where there's restitution, there's mm -hmm. forgiveness. And then, and, then, and then we help the person who committed the crime to, to, to do the things that they need to do to become better people. And we've had some who have gone to law school who have really changed their lives and, and become really incredible people. Wow. After, after they go through this process. So that's really a wonderful thing that I'm doing is working with the Williston Restorative Justice Center. Look it up. Um, and it's I think it's the way that our justice system needs to go. I don't think women should be in prison. I think they should be put at, at one of the schools that have shut down one of the colleges and they should be they should be allowed to go to school and have their children with them. And they should be allowed to be given a second chance in life. Women who do not commit violent crimes are often there because of the men that they lived with who were right. into whatever they were doing. And the women get pulled into these systems. And I just right. don't think women should have to have to serve time in a prison if, if they haven't uh, committed yeah. a violent crime. They should be in a beautiful place. And if you've ever been into the, into the women's prison, which I have been, I've gone in and spoken, yeah. it is not a place for women no. and they're taken away from their children and their families. So I really want to see a, a change in the way that we treat, that we, that we provide justice. It should be about healing and about growth and, 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 uh, and restitution and caring and love. It should not be about punishment and shame. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the nonviolent crimes, you know, the, right. the, right. the dope crimes, the things like right. that. So anyway, yeah. that's, that's something I'm really going to jump into in the next five, in, in a big way over the next few years. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite quote or um, saying that you kind of live by? Well, I'm not a big religious person, um, and I, I, Rick and I kind of consider ourselves kind of, probably kind of Zen and Buddhist, and, um, you know, but there's this one that I have up on my wall that says, try to, you know, be intimate with all things. Mm -hmm. So try to find a connection, like, with everything. Um, you know, try, try to find a connection, even with, you know, when you're outside and, you know, you see a butterfly, I mean, try to connect with that in some right, way and right. everything, and you're, and you're, you know, whether it's a, a good meal or whatever, try as a human being to connect yes. with ev with everything in a way that's really meaningful and try not to be judgmental and try not to, to have high expectations mm -hmm. uh, where they shouldn't be. A mm -hmm. Allow allow people to be who they are and accept them for who they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in the day when we're so divided and you want to have this, you have to understand where the other side's coming from and try to, you know, try to, try to, you know, be a better person with all that. So, yeah. especially now. I, uh, you, you truly have a lust for life, Linda. Um, well, thank you, Gary. I, you know, I, I posted something on Facebook last spring. It was a, um, a red bud tree and it had beautiful flowers. You were you wanted to know. You wrote to me. What is that tree? And I could that that intimacy that you're talking about is there for you, and just about everything that that you touch. And that's it's a true gift and much appreciated. Well, thank you, my Any, friend. Yeah, you bet. Anything you want to say to the audience before we end our interview today? Well, I just want to say that I I want to thank uh, CCTV. This is CCTV, and I, I, you know, Lauren Glenn and her whole staff, um, you know, they've been around for a long, long time and they're bringing to us, 
local 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 news and local people and the localism is that let's let's keep things local yeah. and buy local go to your farmers markets support our local farmers who are giving us i mean the produce this year is phenomenal have you seen how high the mm. corn is my god yeah, yeah. And, the, and, and the and support local i mean i know we all want to go and shop online and stuff but and, and i do it too but sure. whenever i can i try to shop local so let's let's get our arms around vermont we're a little haven here. We're a yep. special little bubble on this planet, and we need to protect each other and honor each other and love each other and support each other. So that's my that's my message to you is is oh, is, um, is is love local. Love local. Thank you, and thank you for your time today, and thank you for who you are, and thank that husband Rick too, who's over there on the side. Um, <laughs> it's been uh, a, a great. Uh, thank you, Rick. <laughs> You two are amazing people. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just lucky to be with this amazing girl. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Lit that's, up my life. Uh, well, that's thank, great. Thank you, my friend. Uh, well, thank you. And have a great day. Stay cool if you can. And uh, okay. onward we march. Thank you, my friend. You take care. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.